experience the dream. Today we're going to talk about living the dream. And see, the thing is, is that when it comes to when it comes to a dream, we have to we have to realize that that you can't dream unless you have the word. You can't dream. I mean, you, I mean, you you'll go to bed, but, but to wake up with is a nightmare. You can't dream without the word. The word gives me my 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 permission to dream. Amen. Amen. Dreams call for faith. Uh, this is just some of y'all already know, but I mean, I, you, you, you should be able to leave here and talk to somebody else about what the word. Over the last four or five weeks, you should be able to, you, you, should, you should be itching to talk to somebody about your, your children, about your, to your grandchildren, to your friends, to your relatives, that you know what? It's okay to dream. Right. It doesn't make a difference what age you are. It's okay to be called a dreamer if your dream is backed up by the word of God. Amen? Amen. So, and, and, and so what, what happens is when we, when we lose our will to dream, it is an indication of the lack of the word of God in our lives. Again, and, and, and I want to point out, when we talk about dream, we're not talking about uh, ungrateful to God the way he has you now. We're not talking about that, but we're talking about because the word of God says I can have, that, 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 that there's no limit to what I what, what, what I think the Lord can do for me. But what I want the Lord to do for me is different from what uh, you want the Lord to do for you. You know, I mean, and, and, and it, could be some, it could be something big or it could be something small. We don't put limits on God and we don't, and we don't say something is too small for us to ask God for. Oh, thank you. But you got to understand, this world this world is designed uh, to, to keep you down. This world is designed to make you doubt yourself. This world is designed to make you think you're not who you're supposed to be in God. It's designed that way. I mean, like I said, if you, 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 get, you, you get among some, uh, you get among, you know, the brothers, right? And we'll be in the and, and, and we'll, before long, we'll start talking about the man and how the white man going to keep us down. And I, but you can get among some white folk too, they, look, it's, it's, it's struggle 
though he knew we were, we were going through here the series, and, and he was saying that God had told him something, and, 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 and it said that, you know, basically that he was going to eventually uh, give up his pastor and just be the bishop. But he made the mistake of sharing it with his congregation, and because they didn't know the time frame for what he was saying, some of them started to leave. Well, if this ain't gonna be the pastor, no more, I better just find me a pastor. But the thing was, is that God, he, he said, he said God had given that to him for him, not for him to share with everybody else, because he didn't know whether or not that was gonna be two years, ten years, twenty years down the line. But he had to begin to tell him to begin to dream in that fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, again, you have to, you have to watch, be mindful of who you share your dream with, and sometimes people will manipulate you. They just, they just 
that's what it says. He did not let his circumstances dictate his attitude. Now, what he was going through, he didn't let his circumstances dictate his attitude. And, and he realized that he had to be confident as well as patient. As I said before, I know that I know that I know. I know God is. I know God can. I know God is able. No, the whether he will or not, that's not my problem. But I know he said it. I know he can. I know he's able. And I know what I'm supposed to do to, to put myself in line to be blessed. That's what I'm supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. Now, if you decide that you're not too there, then understand. You're going to either put yourself in the line for a blessing or you're going to put yourself in the line of a cursing. And I don't care how much money you bring down the... Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't care how much money you bring down the aisle to give to the man of God or the woman of God and they say, hey, if I want to be blessed, bring $5,000 out. Bring $500 out. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, get in the blessed life. Right? No, if you're not obeying the word, you, you, you can say that.
But the curse that you had to go through in the first step.
not. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, and thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flock, and thy herd, and all that I have. And, I, and there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine. Oh, thank you, Jesus. See, here's the thing. If you look and continue to look at the past, God can never use you in the future. If he's stuck on revenge on his brothers, he never saved the whole nation. If his thing is just to, you know, to, to, to wipe out his brothers and kill them, he loses focus of what God has him there. Yes, there was pain. Yes, there was struggle. Yes, you know, yes, yes, there was embarrassment. Yes, there was uh, 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 I had to be humble. But I had to do all of that so God can now use me. He couldn't use me at that. And I understand this. He teaches him all that and brings him there. But one thing that he would point out in the, in the last uh, chapter, or the chapter we had last week, is that this Pharaoh was a young man. He's only 30, and this sparrow has to be made 15. And he says, now I'm a father figure to the sparrow. So not only has God blessed me to be second to Pharaoh, he looks at me now as a father figure, and I have greater influence than even if I was second to command. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And as a GD, you got to read this. It's a welcoming, hallelujah, loving his brothers, loving his, his younger brother. They go and get the father. They go and get all of Israel. And, and, and Pharaoh was like, and Pharaoh was like, look, this is your family. Well, I'm going to love on your family. I'm going to give them the best land. Goshen was the best land. They dwell in, in Goshen. And, 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 and now here in 46, just to show you where God was at in all of this. Chapter 46 at the beginning, it says that Israel took his journey with all that he had and he came to Beersheba and offered sacrifice unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, in case y'all know Jacob and Israel, the same words. Jacob, and he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I, I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph, Joseph shall put his hands upon us. Diana. See, y'all remember, this is, this is how they got there when we, we found out how Moses had to bring them out. This is how they get there. And they, but they went down into Egypt with God's hand. Think about it, well, that's a little story. But you go down, and you go with God blessing you, and you forget about God, and that's why you get a Moses to your child. Because he said, I was going to bring them out. Okay, let's look at the last, last, Chapter. Last lesson that we have to get out of this. Genesis 50, 15 to 20. Joseph's father dies. And for whatever reason, his brothers think that the only reason that they are alive is because the father was alive. Now the father dies. And they keep to the back of their head what they did to this powerful man. See, because a lot of times people don't. They don't understand their relationship with God. And they think carnally. And they think what they would do in the same situation. They don't think, they, they can't think from what, what, what a God-inspired person would do. People can only think from their, from their frame of mind. So they begin to put their frame of mind on Joseph. And because of that, they began to get afraid. And they began to lie. And they lied on the dead father. And they said, it says, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will per peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent the messenger unto Joseph, saying, Our father, they commanded before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, 
is, is that if you open up your eyes, this is not a scripture, but the world says that you, you can't see the forest for the trees. You stuck on a tree that's in your way, but you can't see the forest. You can't see the beauty of the forest. You can't see the beauty of the plant. You can't see what God has for you because you're just stuck. And he's helping his brothers get unstuck. Hey, you must be unstuck. You did some bad things to me when I was young. But you know what? If you never did that, I would never be where I am. Some of us, we would never have sought God if we never went through. 